Hey guys, my name is Matt and I own an Aqua Glide Blackfoot Angler 160. When I bought this, I loved unpackaging it for the first time. It was so awesome, I was so excited and to get it on the lake and the river was insane. It's a great boat. But there were no videos on how to package it back up and the tips and tricks that you have to know, okay, in order to do it correctly. Next thing I do is I roll it back to the car and what am I gonna do? I'm gonna deflate this unit, okay? I'm gonna push in, turn, push in, turn, get all the air out of it. But watch this, I'm not trying to fold it up nicely at the lake. And you're like, well, why? Because there's water. You can't be folding it up with water and you really are not at the lake, at the river, going to be able to get all the water out of it. It's impossible. What I do is I do this. I fold it four times. Okay, I'm just gonna fold it this way. I might do this, I might not. I'm gonna fold it this way. And what am I doing? I'm just getting the air out of it, okay? I'm gonna fold it this way. What am I doing? I'm getting the air out of it. That's all I wanna do now. Do I need all the air out of it? No. A lot of times when I'm getting out of the water, I don't know if, what it is, I just wanna leave. You see what I'm saying? I don't know if that's like you and you want to spend forever out there. I want to leave and say, I just do this right like this. Okay. Let me fix this. Boom. And I put this in the back of my SUV. Once I leave the lake, the river, wherever I was kayaking, I bring this here into my garage. I have two eight foot tables set up. If you have a garage and you can do this, you want to do it. Then what do I do? I'm going to roll it back out like this. I'm going to take the liner that's right here and I'm going to put it up here. See that? That's, the, that's that drop floor. I'm taking the drop floor out. Why do I want to do that? Because there's water under the drop floor. Most of these over the course of time. The problem with them is, is people leave water in them and it eventually, after years, it dry rots the plastic, okay, the material. We don't want that. So we always take our liner out, we leave it up there, and then we inflate both of these liners to about 80%. I don't wanna fill them all the way up because it gets hot in my garage. After I've inflated the two tubes, I'm gonna take my sponge, and if you don't have a sponge and you have a kayak, you're crazy, you need to get a good sponge. And I'm just gonna get the excess of water out, I'm gonna wring it out, and I'm gonna go up and down, I'm gonna kinda inspect the boat, and that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna leave this boat in here for 24 hours. It's on I'm all gonna... inflatable kayaks, there's this corner right here where they've hooked the stitching together, where they're putting the floor and the sides together, and the baffles. This is where the water likes to stay, this is why you have to inflate those to about 80% again, leave it, and then take your sponge, get the water out, and then try as much as you can to get this in the corner all the way around the boat and leave it. Allow it to dry naturally. Then you can come back the next day and you can inspect your boat. to folding the Blackfoot or any inflatable kayak, one of the things that the manufacturer will not tell you, if they have molly mounts, it makes it more difficult to fold it up. Understand this, when we first got the Blackfoot, we were so excited and we wanted to just, you know, rig this thing out with double cameras and fishing gear and cup holders. And here's the thing, I would say you can do all of that, but you have to realize it makes it harder to fold it and harder to put it into the bag, almost impossible. I would say this, wherever you're going to all the time use the mounts, that's where you want to put your molly brackets. Do you understand like this? We have a Scotty here. They have Yak Attack. We put one here. We actually put one everywhere. We put them all, we filled this boat with as many Scotty amounts. So when we were on the water, we could move the cameras, we could move our fishing poles, we could move our cups. You know what I'm saying? All of that stuff. And we found out it was just like insanely hard to fold it back up. So now, we only have the mounts on the front and the back, and whenever we need them, it's very simple to go ahead and put them on there. Start in the middle, because they have the handles, okay? And I want to start to fold 
this side in. And if you have help, like a wife or a, uh, a son or something, it makes it that much easier. But basically, you're just straightening it out. You're making sure there's no creases in it. You know, I don't want to fold it with gigantic creases. So I'll start with this side, kind of get a feel for it. This is looking good. And then I'm going to go to this side. And is it going to be perfect? No. Is it ever going to be, ever going to be like Aquaglide put it in the bag originally? No. You just have to fold it up so it gets in the bag. And again, if you will take that drop stitch lining floor out, you will have no problem putting it in the bag and then putting the drop stitch floor back on top of it in the bag. So I got these together like this. They're in the middle. As my first fold, is gonna be somewhere in here. I do not want this folded, if that makes sense. Okay, so I can, I can go back to about here like that. See this? You don't want this to be folded. Then I'm gonna pitch this back. Now see how this happens? So you're, you're kind of playing with it. Look, I'm pushing down and I'm doing that. That is perfect. Now, before I fold the next fold, what am I doing? I'm tucking it in. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back, I'm pulling that in, I'm tucking it in, holding that with one hand. Again, if you have two people, you're good. Now look at the molly mount, how the molly is going to push this up. That's okay, but again, it's easier without the molly mounts. It's not hurting it, but let me say this. Look at, look at, look at. You don't want this molly mount on this. If that makes sense, you don't want it on the sides. If you're gonna put a molly somewhere, put it on the drop stitch floor. So pull those around there, okay? We're pulling it in again, I'm holding it. What am I doing? I'm rolling it, pulling it in. Now look right here, see this right here? Sometimes it likes to crinkle. We don't want it crinkling because here's the thing, you don't know how long it's gonna be before you're out on the water and you don't want this stitching having to give away because you folded it crappy, okay? I'm holding it and I'm rolling it. You see where we're at now, okay? So we're gonna go back one. And we're gonna fold this right here, making sure it's straight. And then we're gonna fold this over to there and that's your black foot. Now, while you're doing this, you're inspecting it. If you see crap on it or garbage on it or seaweed, wipe it off. Don't put this thing away terribly dirty and make sure whatever you do that it's completely dry. You're screwing yourself if you put this thing away wet because over time, okay, and I'm talking about a while, whether it's a couple years, you're gonna ruin the stitching. You're gonna, you're gonna rot this thing out. It's gonna get moldy. It's gonna become nothing. Be throwing a $2,000 kayak away because you didn't do your due diligence. When I go to garage sales, one of the things that I see is used kayaks. But they're oftentimes the kind that have the material on them. You know what they did? They got out of the creek, they got out of the river, they got out of the lake, they folded it up, jammed it in the bag, and then they left it there till the next time that they went kayaking. And what happened? Black mold. They they started to rot it out. A, a lot of times I can look at it and see how bad it is because now they're selling me their $600 kayak for $30. So what do I do? I go to the house, I inflate it, and then I take a pressure washer and I rinse it off and I wash it with soap. And pull those baffles out of that material, look at them, see how damaged they are. I'll treat them with a certain type of lotion, basically a spray to make sure that this doesn't get hard and that this stays pliable. Then I'll put it all back together. And what do I have? I have a $600 kayak that I bought for $30. Let me show you how to put this in the bag. So my kayak's here and my bag's here. This is how I have it, okay? I open it up this way. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick this up. I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna pull over the sides in a little bit. Sometimes you have to tuck it in. And here's the problem. A lot of times, here, let me just tell you the problem. You folded it, but you didn't fold the sides in. So it's bulging on the sides. These will be bulging on the sides, okay? It will fit in the bag, but you didn't fold it right. You didn't, you didn't fold it in enough, and so it's not going to fit. Then I topple this over. We're gonna zip this up. And again, if you have help, my wife always helps me do this. Oh my goodness, is she a godsend of a woman. And again, what, what you're doing is kind of maneuvering it. Look right it. now, this zipper, let, th here, it doesn't want to close because it's tight here. So all I do when that happens is I do this. I put it on side and then it zips up. Push it in like that. Then on the sides, 
you guys know you have the clips you want to use the clips because the clips are going to protect the material if you drop it and how you're carrying it especially if you're taking this somewhere guys and it's on your back you got to clip the sides in because it's protecting this material as good as it is it can't take the full weight of it without the clips guys there you go and you're like well matt do you put the chairs in the bag i do not because i like the bigger chairs with the extensions out so i'm higher to me it's just so much easier just throwing them in the back of the suv i never want to put metal objects in with my inflatable that's just me i know there's some people it, well it came in the bag i'm putting it back in the bag well you can do that but over time you know what i'm saying there's going to be something that's sitting on top of this and the edge of that chair is going to go into it you don't want to do it okay could you put a chair here yeah i've seen people actually attack a chair to this a chair here and here or carry one this is on your back guys okay so you can still put one here and have a cooler in one hand and another chair in the other hand listen 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 i can replace the chairs for like $80. Brand new chairs, brand new material, have the old Aqua Glide logo on it. But I can't replace this for no $80. No, you probably know what I'm talking about. This is $15, $18, $2,000 depending on where you bought it. Okay? So the chairs are not a deal breaker for me. I'm not going to try to put them back in here. Okay? Guys, this is just me being a little OCD. There's just the slightest chance if I'm jam packing the Aqua Glide in here and putting a chair in there that one of those edges could what? Come across and just kind of rub, okay, on the Duratec lining and make it weak in one area or not. To me, this is the most important part of this boat. It's not the chair, so I'm going to give it its own bag. It deserves it. As we were having a terrible time trying to figure out how to get this thing back in the bag, I hoped this video gave you some tips and tricks and gave you some insights to what we do and it's a lot of times people just don't know that they have to fully dry these units out or they're gonna dry rot out okay thanks again give me a thumbs up if you liked it have a blessed day get on the water You know, one of the differences I can tell about this lake is it smells salty, which is kind of crazy. It smells like seawater. Um, I was in San Diego for a lot of my life, and the water smells a lot like the bay there, which is kind of crazy. I'm going to cheat here. Take my sea tug wheels off. Guys, without this, we would be sunk. These are sea tug wheels. They break down. We don't need to break them down because we have so much room in the kayak. But I tell you what, it's it's one of those things that you can't, you really can't have a big kayak or a decent sized kayak without some type of wheel cart. And whoa, I love sea tug wheels, okay? So hey, we're gonna get on the lake. We'll be back to you.